Ed Membry at the free throw line wearing the number 95. He chose that number when he was drafted by Atlanta to honor his younger brother who was born in 1995. Adrian Potts, he was shot and killed near the campus of the University of North Carolina. Charlotte trying to break up a fight, and he wears the number to honor the year in which his younger brother was born. is the sixth consecutive game with the sixth consecutive change in the starting lineup. Sacramento, they've won two games in a row. They're two and four on the road. The Toronto Raptors have dropped their last two games. This is the second game of a three-game Tampa stand. 13-point game. Plenty of time left. Bembry, the three-pointer, and it's good. Doesn't take many shots, Matt, but the coaches talked about they were surprised how well they can shoot the ball going back to training camp. Charlotte, uh, I lived all over Charlotte. Uh, li lived with a single mother. It was me, my little brother, and my mother. And uh, she was working two to three jobs uh, for the most part forever, however long I can remember. So uh, she was in and out working and we were moving around different places and we were just making it happen and uh, lived with a couple of my cousins before, lived with my grandmother before. So it was, it was a, a little rough coming up, but we all we all did it collectively as a family and that that's just what, what made it happen. It was pretty tough, but we all we all managed to get through and fight through and I think that, that made us strengthen up for, for the future for sure. Holmes taken away by Fred Van Vliet. The strength, Bembry, finger roll, five point game. She means everything to me for sure. Uh, a lot of strength that I have, I've, I've learned through her and uh, vice versa. I mean, she tells me that too because um, the roles has changed a little bit. I'm a little older now and um, a little bit more experienced so uh, just watching her grow and see how hard she worked, um, it just pushed me to go out there and just be even better. Obviously my best friend, um, we had spent so much time together with each other since my mom was working or wasn't there at the time and we, we had so much time with each other so uh, we, we were just always close um, for the most part. I mean. Anytime you see me, you see him. So, and uh, we were just very close. I mean, all my family is very close, and um, I mean that's just my family. At the end of the night, Sacramento gets a season split as they win it, 126-124. I didn't play school basketball until my sophomore year in high school. Uh, I wasn't really <laughs> that great. Well, I wasn't really worried about my grades at the time. I was more so just running around um, in my city, just playing AAU. Wasn't really focused on my grades until I got to high school my freshman year. And I wanted to play, but my grades weren't weren't there. And I was just watching. I'm like, dang, like this competition level is crazy. Like, And then that's when I locked in. And um, my sophomore year, that was the first year I was able to play organized basketball at the school. And then um, my family's originally from New Jersey. So uh, after my sophomore year, ended up moving to New Jersey um, and ended up going to St. Patrick's in New Jersey. And uh, that's where I started um, my junior year and ended off my senior year as well, which, le which led me to go to St. Joe's because it was only an hour and a half away from home. So uh, it, it was pretty cool that I got the experience in high school in Charlotte and then going up north and playing at all of the parks in New York and in Jersey. Yeah, it was pretty cool and entertaining. Raptors lead by seven. Kyle up at the rim. Bembry, there you go. Get behind the D. And 
Bembry with a big shot. You know, I like DeAndre Bembry. Yeah. I think he gives you veteran experience. He doesn't make mistakes when he's on the floor. Plays great defense and kind of does everything well. When you're able to go to college for more than one year, uh, I think you could just learn so much. Uh, it was a lot of different roles that I had to play and had to learn um, throughout those three years. And uh, I think I learned a lot. I mean, Phil Martelli helped me a lot for sure. Um, he was a great coach there. And Philly is just a, is just one of those strong based cities that you just, you're either gonna get better or you're just gonna, you're just gonna give it, you're just gonna let it go. So um, that's why me, me and Kyle, we, we always talk about um, the Philly days and how uh, it, it just helps you. It just molds you in, uh, good, into certain characters. Numbers. Oh, oh. Bembry <laughs> with the slam dunk. Second time. On the alley-oop. Second time in his game, Kyle Lowry has found Bembry for the alley-oop. The Raptors are going to end their three-game slide and then improve to 8-12. and 12. Orlando will fall to 8-13. and 13. Rare is the chance the NBA players get to take a bus between games, but that was the deal given the proximity of Orlando to the Raptors' new home in Tampa, about a 90-minute drive, even less than that, for the rematch as they find their way to Amway Center after a dominant victory over the Magic two nights ago. The Raptors are in Orlando, we're in Toronto, and for the Raptors, are getting set to take on the Orlando Magic again. Here's Powell attacking. Nice. Siakam swings it. Fred, the three is good. Deep three into the clock. Swish. Uh -huh. Shouldn't me. Swish. Steady, Freddy. I thought early after about a second or third one, it just seemed to be coming out of his hand so, so easily, and they were hitting right in the heart. I mean, they were just, you know, right in the heart of the, you know, basket. Freddy. Van Fleet, the three. <laughs> On fire. Five threes in the quarter for Fred Van Fleet. Lead pass, Baines. Here's Powell. Back up top. Fred Van Fleet. His name is Fred Van Fleet. 86-77. Fred, the three. Good. <laughs> this is unbelievable. 11 made. Freeze for Rockford's finest. Oh. 42 points tonight. What a night. Steady Freddy thought about it. Now here he is attacking. Finger roll. Good. Bet on yourself. It wasn't forced to him, right? It was everything was in rhythm and, and, and flow of the game. Um, I think the last two buckets. Um, the, the, the pass over top, I kind of forced the pass to him, and then the other one, I, I wanted to make sure he got the 50, but everything was in the, in the flow. Look at that. There you go. And there it is, 50. Fred Van Vliet becomes the fourth Raptor in franchise history to score 50. Look at the Kyle looking for him. He gets another and two. And there it is. The Raptor record, Fred Van Vliet with 54. A night for the ages by Van Fleet. A franchise record-breaking performance by Fred Van Fleet. 54 points. Toronto wins it, 123-108. Oh, my God. Oh, my boy tough, dog. My boy tough, man. Oh boy, tough, man. You know, they all are special to me tonight, which is really special because it came from a kid who you know, was undrafted, worked his way to, you know, uh, uh, an NBA player and then an NBA starter, and then possibly this year an all-star and, you know, possibly an all-defensive player. Um, and that, that's what makes it really special.
franchise record points for a game. Woo! Yeah, buddy! Yeah. Hey, listen, hold on, listen. That man was undrafted. That man worked his ass off. That man come in here every day and bust his ass. That's what y'all talking about. That's the hard work right there. He came yes, from sir. undrafted. Really better than himself. My little brother. Yes, sir! I was more hyped than he was for him to get 50 points and uh, and hit 10 threes and uh, <laughs> words can't uh, describe how I feel right now. Thanks, man. Freddie, come to the Met. Yo, yo, that joy, he he got money too. <laughs> hey, peep his watch he got on too. Look at the watch, money. You know, just a special night, obviously, on a, a lot of different levels. So just trying to enjoy it for now. But, you know, I'm not, it's not a championship or anything like that. It was a good game for me. And, and I'm, you know, I'll enjoy all the love for, for hours, a couple hours, and get ready for the next one. Scotty, I think it's time to go. It's time to go, I guess. Play the clip. Play the clip, man. Right now, just play, just play the 50, 54 point clip. Freddy 54 right now, play it. Is that your favorite clip of the year? Yep, favorite clip. Buckets after buckets, you know, raindrops. Nothing touching the room. You got, obviously, you got the Brooklyn Nets and that three headed monster. What? How, I mean, you kind of want to see what that looks like up close. Oh, I mean, for, for sure, it's exciting playing against guys like that, man. Every night you go out there, that's, you know, that's what the league is about. And having, you know, super talented guys that you have to play against and, and you know, and you, it's, just, it's just exciting. And, and, and for us, you know, as, comp as competitors, you want to go out there and, you know, lace them up. Working Harden, Siakam elevating, and gets the roll. And lead 3 of 14 from the floor as Irving turns it over, tried to foul Siakam, didn't get the call, Lowry cashes in. And a timeout taken by Steve Nash. Lowry a 3 is good, he has been dynamic tonight, 27 points. And Toronto back in front by one. Raptors trying to win their third straight. Lowry again hits the three. Back-to-back -back triples for the 15-year pro. Lowry in trouble. Lowry pulls. Doesn't get that one. Rebound somehow flagged down. One armed by Powell. Van Vliet hits the three. And that will do it. On a chaotic night, it's the Raptors who come out on top against Brooklyn, 123 to 117. And this is a huge win for Toronto. Brooklyn loses for just the second time in the last seven games. Hell yeah, oh, hell yeah. I know. Me. Let's get out of here, y'all. Hey, we got beat the hey, 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 hey. 
come out here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Listen, uh, Brooklyn's, Brooklyn's going to the same airport, so it'll be the first time in eight years we beat the other team out. We can do it tonight. Russ, A lot of y'all Yeah. I was living in New Jersey. I had just walked back in the house um, in New Jersey, and then my mom had got a call, and I just, I don't know, I just felt something that it was just, it was just some type of energy that hit me. And yeah, they, his, his father, um, we had two different fathers, so his father called and broke the news to us. Police say they got a call around 3 a.m. about a shooting at an apartment complex on Collegiate Avenue. Investigators said a large group was inside an apartment when a fight broke out, then gunfire. Four people were hit. Only the bullet that hit Pot was fatal. I didn't leave my house for probably like the past two days. And I don't know, it, it was just tough. And I ended up obviously had to go back to Charlotte and see all of my family and stuff. So it was, it was a tough day. I mean, it's still tough up till today, but like I said, I have a huge family and we're all super close. So um, seeing my family and keeping those bonds always help us. For Potts family, who says they're planning to watch his brother drafted in the NBA later this month, it's violence they now know firsthand. I pretty much had a bunch of draft workouts. I think I ended up setting up probably 15. I did about, I'll say, seven workouts. And then uh, like a week before the draft, my, that's when my brother passed away. And I ended up canceling about like eight or nine workouts after that because my mind, everything, my heart, everything was just gone at the time. So it was, it was tough at the time, so just canceled everything and then in, ended up draft night, everything ended up happening how we wanted it to happen. With the 21st pick in the 2016 NBA Draft, the Atlanta Hawks select DeAndre Bembry from St. Joseph's University. It was very close to my family. I mean, we had like a draft party. I rented out one of the hotels in New Jersey and had a bunch of family, friends, and it, it was it was pretty cool and entertaining for us, but it was also tough for my family at the time because it was tough. Me and my brother, we, we always talked about those moments and these moments, so it was just something very close to my family. So it was a lot of mixed emotions, but it was something that we I definitely dreamed of. 134 to 123, and look at Beverly come up with the basketball! He takes it! Oh! Leak out for RJ Diacono and Ryan is going to have it blocked and a crackdown, smackdown by DeAndre Bembry. Where's number 95, if you're noticing, the only player to ever wear that number in the NBA? in honor of his little brother who passed away in 2016. His brother was born in 1995. I chose 95. Um, I was, I, I knew uh, I wanted to have the number based off of him. And I don't know, something just clicked. It was like, yo, just do like the year he was born. And I was thinking, I'm like, dang, like no one ever had that type of number before. And I'm like, all right, this perfect night, like 1995. I can just easily switch the number to just 95, and I thought it was pretty dope being able, being the first person to ever do it as well. Um, it all, it all just seemed, seemed right to me, and I'm just going to forever try to keep that number with me for sure. The ATL on a Saturday night from State Farm Arena, the first meeting between the Toronto Raptors and the Atlanta Hawks. The Raptors have won three in a row, while the Atlanta Hawks have dropped three in a row. I was blessed to be able to stay with uh, the same team for my first four years. Um, 
But we were losing, and that was pretty tough. Uh, that was my first time losing so much, and so it was pretty tough. So um, once I was able to be a free agent and be, be able to actually look at other teams and got to uh, figure out that Toronto still wanted to look at me and, and bring me in, I was, I was ready to go with it as soon as um, me and my agents talked about it. Because like I said, I'm already comfortable with the guys here. I mean, they know me, I know them. I know the style of play. I know they already are playing in games that I want to play in. Um, so I, it was just an opportunity I couldn't turn down for the most part. So um, once once I seen the opportunity there, I told my told my agent like, let's do it. I was training in Miami every all of, for the most of the quarantine, and I was, I was just ready to go. To be honest with you, great play after the timeout, and they get a wide open shot for Bembry. Excellent execution. Me being super close to my family, me having so many cousins and younger people looking up to me. Uh, in my in my role in my family, I'm more so one of the ones that made it out. So I try to keep my head up, and whenever I do need to have those down moments, it's nothing wrong with having those down moments. But I'm also one of the guys that in my family I have to be that role model as well. So um, it's a little bit of two different roles that I have to play with being emotional and also being that strong character in my family. So uh, it's, it's, it's tough, but for the most part, um, it still feels like it's yesterday. Um, that, that feeling never goes away. So um, me having my family around, cousins, friends, uh, it's just something that won't ever go away. The feeling will always be there, but he, I, I know he, he's always watching after me for sure. The AP Foundation works extensively to support families affected by gun violence, specifically those on Atlanta's west side, and that's engaging in meaningful conversations and also healing and emotional intelligence. It's something ongoing with DeAndre Bembry. A cause, as you know, Andre, is very near and dear to DeAndre after losing his brother. and uh, it, It's just so great uh, that he gets involved and does it here locally uh, in Atlanta. He's always, always been a positive person and always pushing me to do better and always was right there beside me wanting me to do do the best I can do. So, like I said, I, I know he's always watching me. I mean, I got the number on my back. I got him tatted on my arm. Uh, my family, I, he's just always there. I, it's not one second I don't think about him. So, I know he's always there.